Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So we're hanging out here today at Gecko Daddy. These guys work with some of the most amazing leopard geckos. So we're with uh, Chris and Brian over here. Uh, Clint is saving uh, one of our little leopard geckos. Brian Cusco Chase is hanging out here. So you guys are about to see some leopard geckos that are only available right here at Gecko Daddy. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. So guys, you run Gecko Daddy and it's a family company basically. I mean, all your kids are involved. Yeah. You know, so how did this all start? Well, Gecko Daddy started with uh when when our kids were about eight years old our oldest kids and uh, we we wanted to give them uh, an experience with reptiles we grew up with reptiles brian and i both um, since we were eight we've had reptiles and oh when we were teenagers we worked in a, in a reptile store uh, called hoffman's pets in concord california mm -hmm. and we got into geckos we bred geckos all through our teenage years and you know back in the 80s wow and there was no morphs it was just right. straight geckos from pakistan and now look and what we've now, got. Now so there's lots of morphs. So what do we got here? So this is a tangerine, and uh, at Gecko Daddy, we're we're really interested in line breeding projects. You know, just things that uh, that take time to develop. And we got into tangerines in about 2006. Uh, we 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 bought some what were then you know called tangerines back then. We've been breeding tangerines ever since then, and we actually have been line breeding our own geckos, our own tangerine geckos since 2010. Never not adding a single gecko from outside. Is that right, Gecko Daddy? So about 10 years, and uh, you know just looking for more extreme uh, tangerine colors, and uh, and including all the way down through the tail. Yeah, well, he, uh, yeah, this I, I've heard a lot of geckos called tangerines that do not look anything like that. That's right. So just, a, oh my goodness. Then you one up yourself with that one. Yeah. We've been doing this, this particular, like I said, project since about 2010, but, um, and we were just calling them tangerine leopard geckos. We've officially named the project and it's called a Tango Crush. Tango, Tango Crush. Tango Crush is what we've been calling That's it. That's a really good name. For about the last two years. Wow, that is an amazing gecko. Look at the colors on these. They're screaming orange. You just, I've done like, uh, I, I've, I've been a fan of your guys' work for a long time because, you know, you see leopard geckos all over the place and nowhere do I see leopard geckos that are anywhere close to as spectacular as the ones that you guys have. I think, well, I think a lot of people got into leopard geckos and then they got out of leopard geckos. And then they got back in because they're just spectacular pets and you guys just stuck with it and just yeah. the results are incredible. Absolutely. Well, one of the reasons we've done that is we, like I said, our kids, this is about kids and leopard geckos are really easy. They're, they're, they're a hardy animal. They don't have major, you know, caging requirements. They can be kept pretty. Uh, pretty basic. Pretty basic. Yeah. Very easy for kids. So here you have an enclosure set up, and this is really basically uh, all you really need for leopard geckos. You've got, you know, a water dish here. You've got a feed dish. You have a little hide box, a hide box there. Yep. Um, that's really as easy. I mean, you just couldn't get more easy than this kind of setup for yeah. a leopard gecko. That, that's what makes it so good. Uh, especially like like we said earlier for for kids for uh, for introduction to reptiles and to grow from there it's great great easy animal to set up uh, one thing I would note is that leopard geckos need a warm spot of maybe 90 degrees right. upper 80s 90 degrees they are desert species and then you can go down to room temperature on the other end you want a thermal gradient so that the animal can choose uh, where it wants to be how warm it wants to be uh, in this hide here, we would put damp sphagnum moss. They like a damp, warm hide. Humid hide, uh, yeah, yep. that's important and, for them. And um, and then, uh, uh, you know, a water dish. In here, we we would have a, a ceramic heat emitter. And uh, actually, we we recommend that when you use a light system, that you use a dimmer switch. Yes. So that you can control the temperature and keep that that temperature at uh, you know 90 degrees at this end of the cage, and then you got uh, a water dish that uh, that is going to evaporate mm -hmm. and create some some humidity. Now with a, a screen top like this, you're going to lose a lot of that heat and humidity right out of the top. And so what what you can do is put a, 
um, a piece of plexiglass or something like that over a portion of this to, right. to help balance that out so you don't lose a lot of the heat. And if you don't have plexiglass, you know, saran wrap, yeah, something that works as well. Yeah, something easy. They eat crickets or uh, mealworms. At Gecko Daddy, we feed only crickets or roaches. Um, one reason for that is that uh, we like to have our kids have a responsibility. Sure. And so they feed crickets several times a week, every other day, essentially. And, uh, and then they can monitor and make sure that the geckos that they're in charge of are eating. And you can get all of your feeder insects directly from Rainbow Mealworms. Their link is in the description below. So this is a Halloween mask. The Halloween mask, I guess mutation, if, if we want to call it that, the, the patterning is what we're looking at, particularly that head pattern. Look at that head pattern. Um, this line of bold leopard gecko was developed in the early 2000s. And there's been a few people in the leopard gecko world that work with them early on. But we don't see them very much anymore. And in fact, we've there's been times where we've thought, well, if we don't breed pure Halloween masks, then there probably there might not be very many people breeding them anymore. Okay. So we've continued to work with them. We've got a pretty diverse line of, of Halloween masks now. Same with the tangerines, you know, we showed you a couple tangerines, we're showing you a couple Halloweens, but when you have multiple males and multiple females, you can kind of spread those lines and then and then work through that way so you're not doing a ton of inbreeding. I just love how bold that pattern is on their head. Yeah, they're really cool. And they're making a comeback. We're getting more and more people asking for Halloween masks these days. So this is what happens when you cross a tangerine, a Tango Crush tangerine with a Halloween mask. And this is probably three years down the road, you know. The projects that we pick are, are just line breeding, so you're 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 looking for certain traits that you want to pull out that aren't their inheritance is is polymorphic or it's it's just line breeding. The fun part about that is it takes time and and uh, it becomes unique. It's kind of your unique project. So we call this it's a cross between a Halloween and a tangerine, so we call it a jack o' lantern. Oh, nice! That's a good name. And so we've been we've been doing a, the this project for I'd say about six seven years now. So let's talk a little bit about the genetics of these guys. So, you know, a lot of people will breed morph to morph to try to get another morph, mm -hmm. but you guys kind of took this to another level. You're actually line breeding, and the geckos that we're seeing here today, these are kind yeah. of one of a kind, aren't they? Yeah, so you can't, I mean, to, I guess to produce a jack lantern, you'd have to buy two jack lanterns at this point and, and just continue to, to, to breed that line. It's not. Um, like an albino, where you just stick two albinos together and you produce an albino. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it would be, be specific and unique to us, which is, you know, one one approach to the hobby, you know, is to produce something that not everybody else is producing. Absolutely. This is another cross. This is uh, a Tug Snow by Halloween Mask. You know, this is kind of a highlighter yellow and a really bold pattern. Um, and we call this a light bright. Really bold pattern and really deep, rich colors. I really love this. That yellow is bright. Light bright. If you would. Yeah, I think so. It's probably the best way to put it. I wish they would have thought of it. <laughs> uh, some of them come out quite bold. Yeah. So that's another bold, aspect of it is um, trying to produce bold geckos and then trying to produce really intense fluorescent colors and yeah. patterning. All right, now these just completely caught my eye and you know, dragged it 15 feet because these are so beautiful. Look at these. So this is a white and yellow Tremper Tangerine. This this would be a, an example of a, of a morph that is pretty common, I think. Now these are pretty good, exceptional examples uh, with their patterning and their, their boldness. stripes. And their, yeah, good contrast, high contrast Tremper Tangerines. Um, we do have some that come out with uh, Eclipse Eyes as well. These are just so, so beautiful that we, we thought, let's just, let's, we, we've not typically worked with with the genetics that are just so easily producible. Right. And so, um, we, we just thought, let's, let's do something a little bit different and get into these, and uh, it's been great. So Clint is still uh, hanging out with this little leopard gecko over here. So is it safe to say, Clint, that uh, a leopard gecko video is coming to your channel soon? Oh, absolutely, we, we, we have one. Uh, already, we've covered them actually a few times because they are just such spectacular pets. We've never given a higher score to any lizard. The, the leopard gecko is our reigning I champion. I can definitely see that. For, yep. for score, uh, I think I think only beaten out by by the corn snake as far as reptiles right. go. Uh, and honestly, 
It's got to be close. So Chris's earlier point about being kid friendly, we, of all the species we have at our place, the leopard geckos are the one animal that share the room with the kids and the kids take care of leopard geckos of all the different species we have. So very kid friendly, very hardy and yeah. And one of these days I'm going to make it over to India and do a leopard gecko in the wild video. However, you know, Utah is the farthest I've been able to travel in the past five months, so I don't know when that's going to be, but it's going to happen. All right, so this is kind of a sampling of all the different line bread traits that you guys work with here. Yeah. This is just a group of amazingly beautiful geckos. Um, we, have a, we have what we call the pet owner's oath, which uh, uh, essentially says when you purchase an animal, uh, you become responsible for its life. You become responsible to learn how to care for it, how to um, all of its environmental needs. That animal wants to live. You want that animal to live, and uh, and so we challenge everybody to really learn how to take care of animals and and uh, and keep them properly. And leopard geckos are easy for kids. You know, now I've got to ask you the question that you probably won't be able to answer. Which one of these morphs is your favorite? Oh uh, well, yeah, <laughs> well put. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Too. I, you know, I, honestly... I think that tangerine right there does Yeah, it would be impossible not to be super proud of those tangerines. They're, you know, they're just out of this world. Alright, so here we have some of the little babies. Yeah, these just hatched uh, just uh, last night. Oh, just last night? Yeah. These are little, little babies. Little, little guys. Um, so, we have a Tango Crush tangerine and a Halloween mask. Pure Halloween mask. So that's yeah. what the Halloween masks look like as yeah. babies there. Yeah. And you can see, you know, you can see that you're going to have a bold, a nice a bold gecko there, and you can see that you're going to have a nice orange gecko there. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, when you're when you're lion breeding, you just you have to raise them up. Right. That's the that's one of the, the challenges, I guess, that maybe people haven't maybe recognized with this way of breeding is that you got to raise them up so you can see what you have, and then once you see what you have. You, you hold the best to, to produce the next generation. Absolutely. So it takes a long time to get there. When we first started doing tangerines, they actually hatched out black and yellow like that. So um, they're getting better, you know, as babies they're getting better. Um, you can see right away that you've got, you're gonna have a nice gecko. So I bet you guys are wondering why all of these leopard geckos look like waxy monkey frogs, and that's because they are waxy monkey frogs. So not only does Gecko Daddy work with some awesome leopard geckos, but they also work with these amazing frogs as well. So Chris, these are, I'll just say, these are the most amazing geckos that I think I've ever seen. The work that you're doing with these to bring out these colors and patterns, these really are jaw-dropping geckos, so, you know, it's got to feel good to have all those years of selective breeding kind of pay off like this. Yeah, it, it's a, it's been really cool, especially when we go to uh, reptile shows and, and people are walking by our booth and they see our geckos, and they they're they're seeing what's out there, and we always we always have a lot of great compliments. And, I bet. And it's it's just a great experience, a great a great community to be, to be involved with is the, the gecko community and the reptile community at large. Absolutely. And we've done lots of geckos over the years, different varieties of geckos, but leopard geckos, um, we've just stuck with it and stuck with these particular projects because we like them. If, you don't, if you're not doing something that you like. Why right? do it? Right. And, and it's right. exciting to say, oh, this is starting to get to what we envisioned seven, eight years ago where we're starting to see that this is actually, it's working. It's taking time, but it's working. So you're then, starting to see the payoff of all your hard work and labor yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. Well, thank you so much for having yeah. me over to show these to us. Absolutely. These are amazing. Um, I'm sure that Clint is going to have uh, these featured on uh, his channel. Um, well, we've seen a lot of things here we're going to have to feature for sure. Yeah, right. So guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite leopard gecko that you saw in this video was. And also, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. So thanks for watching, guys. And until the next adventure, love the planet and rattle on.